In this episode, you don't need any sprint planning. You definitely don't need big room planning. You don't need a PSI. You don't need a scrum master. You don't need a product owner. That gets fully replaced by mob AI. A lot of people think the Musk companies are fast mm -hmm. because people work so hard. I mean, yeah, you work hard, but so much of it's automated. Elon is also encouraging everyone to spend money as fast as they responsibly can. And there are no budgets. There's no annual budget, no weekly budget, no monthly budget. The shorter the checking, should we change budget without penalty, the more agile the financially backed change of the company is. Elon would always say, you have no boss, your boss is data. As a result, the companies are very nearly completely flat. There's Elon as like your administrator, kind of, and then your only job is engineer. Mm -hmm. I remember that someone in your room said that, oh, there is a testing code and the production code. I said, no, testing code is a part of the production code. Yeah, and the same here. Welcome to Pragmatic Talks, a podcast and video series where we discuss startups, contemporary digital product development, modern technologies, and product management. This episode is brought to you by Pragmatic Coders in collaboration with Agile by Example, one of the largest agile conferences in Europe. We believe that everyone should have equal access to knowledge about product development and entrepreneurship, and also everyone should have the opportunity to apply it in pursuit of making our world a better place. Through this series, we aim to create an impact on the future world. In today's episode, we welcome Joe Justice. Joe is known for introducing agile and lean practices at top companies such as Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Tesla. He is TEDx speaker and pioneer in agile hardware development. I first met Joe a decade ago when he was the founder of Wikispeed, a volunteer-driven car prototyping and manufacturing company that has been building real cars in a truly agile way. And by agile way, I mean using agile methods such as test-driven development or Scrum to build cars that you can legally drive on public roads. Wikispeed team were able to release a new version of fully drivable and even legally approved cars in just a couple of weeks instead of years as other manufacturers usually do. At that time, we hadn't expected that his journey in agile manufacturing would lead him to work with Elon Musk at Tesla. Today, we will dive into Joe's experiences across various sectors, including his time at Tesla, but we will also discuss his observations from SpaceX and other Musk companies. Based on that, we will try to conclude if agile is still sufficient or if there is more to discover and use nowadays. Listen carefully to this episode to understand how leading companies are already using advanced technologies and AI to stay ahead and disrupt industries. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Joe Justice. Welcome in the next episode of Pragmatic Talks. Today we are at Ajay by Example again. Our guest is no one else but Joe Justice. Uh, it's a great pleasure to have you here. I was amazed that you agreed to join us today and to talk about your recent experiences. I've been observing your career since, I believe, 2014 or, thir or 13, since we met for the first time and I heard about Wikispeed then. I was, uh, I was, I was amused at what, what you achieved with Wikispeed. But the things that you've been do doing later on make me more impressed and, and I'm really, really uh, excited to, to sp speak to you here. Today. It's my honor to be in Poland and it's my honor to be collaborating with you right now, Victor. Thank you so much. Yeah, so Joe, like uh, I, I know you, but uh, like some of our people who, who, who will be watching it or listening to the podcast later on, they may not recognize you or they may not know who you are. So please tell us, who is Joe Justice and what is your story? A lot of people think of me as the agile hardware person, agile project management for hardware design and manufacturing. I started as a software developer. Um, I had a very lucky break working for Bill Gates directly, working with Bill Gates on an agile project. I was a scrum master at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and that was some software, but also social projects like vaccine deployments and um, trying to make the world a better place. I, I started a car company in 2006 using Agile methods, Team Wikispeed, and it was successful. We set four world records. Working for Bill and then learning a lot with my own car company, that created a consulting career and I worked as a consultant in many companies like Amazon and spoke at Google and got to learn a lot from some very skillful people. And for this story, ultimately that 
got me a job at Tesla. Uh, and that's why I'm lucky enough to be here with you in Warsaw mm -hmm. is to talk about my time as an employee at Tesla and when I visited SpaceX as an employee and what I learned about the way they work. That's that's an amazing story. And as I said, like I'm truly impressed by by your story. And <laughs> let's jump into the the, the 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 stories that you already mentioned. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start with Wikispeed. I, I remember that that was quite a nice histor story. How you managed to uh, develop a car, release it to production in a very very short cycle. It's like tell us more about it. Sure. I I had a a, a goal of trying to test and learn in one week chunks. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, it wasn't formal, any agile method. Uh, I didn't have a product owner or a scrum master, but I was trying to iterate quickly. Mm -hmm. And I, I was not able to release a drivable car in a week, mm -hmm. um, but I did in 12 weeks. And that was a world record. Uh, and that, that still is actually a world record for from design of nothing existing to road legal approved or by the government with a license plate on it, 12 weeks. Uh, and I attempted once every week, which I think is why it went as quickly as it did, because mm -hmm. the learning cycle was fast on, on one week attempted increments. They started and ended each Thursday. And in the beginning, it was only me, and I am not a mechanical engineer. I was a software developer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I made a lot of really basic mistakes. And I think that's why it succeeded, because it was hilarious to watch me do really dumb things from people that knew much more about the field than I did. I posted everything on Facebook and YouTube at the time. This was 2006, uh, earlier days of those social platforms. And uh, people would comment saying, well, why haven't you done this really basic thing? I'm like, thank you for saying. And th these were like internet trolls. Like, I can't believe this, this person is doing this really wrong thing, you know, and I'd be like, thank you, you know, because there's no choice but to be humble when you're at the bottom. And I believe it was also world record of monetizing the internet trolls. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Also. And then uh, Wikispeed is what that car company became named when it legally incorporated in 2006. The name was for Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. And the idea was, I knew I didn't have almost any money mm -hmm. and I knew I didn't have enough skill and experience to make this work. So I knew I had to welcome anyone who would give me any of their time. And I thought maybe like how Wikipedia authors can just join an article if they've signed some, some basic code of ethics stuff mm -hmm. to be a Wikipedia author. So I made a one page like promise. I will try to be ethical and said, if you'll sign this, that's it. They, then anything you want to do, you can use my tools, you can use the materials I have, but you know, please sign this one page waiver. And 4,000 people signed it in 20, previous talks say, I, 28 countries? No, I'm not sure. It was a while ago when it was at its peak. Uh, and people just started building cars and car parts. In fact, I've gone on to go to different companies. I haven't attended a Wikispeed standup in a few years now. I still love it, but I prioritize my time other places. People still keep building cars. Like, it, I think it maybe can't die. Uh, it, it's too fun, maybe. And the open source project. The website is full of broken links. It's really a tragedy. I've neglected that too. There's still at least one new sign up signing the online version of the waiver if they can even find it. There's no direct link to it anymore. Mm -hmm. About once a week. Uh, it, it continues to have passionate interest. I hope to figure out how to plug myself back into it at some point. Okay, great. And and so so how did you end up at Tesla? Like, how does it happen? Like, okay, Wikispeed and then Bill Gates and then Tesla, Elon Musk. Okay. So COVID happened mm -hmm. and I'd been teaching project management classes and agile classes in person. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and loving it, loving meeting people who were interested about quick iterations. I was specializing in agile hardware. And in-person work went to zero right away during COVID. So I had no, I had no work, mm -hmm. like a lot of people. What was I going to do? And I'd been fascinated by how quickly Tesla released new product. And I'd consulted to Tesla since 2010. So I had a relationship. I applied 
as a, like a normal person on uh, to a posted job position on careers.tesla.com. Uh, and I, I really want to say this is like my proud moment in my life. I was told I'm the best interview they ever had. Okay. I, I, that's, that's like my, imagine that I can imagine that (laughs) I was thrilled. Um, and, and, and I joined as, as an employee, as my, as my COVID job, Mm -hmm. uh, and directly into like everyone directly into the factory. There are no cushy office positions. There's no agile coach jobs. They don't work that way. It's all engineers, software and hardware. And you're, whether you're software or hardware, you're expected to also physically build cars. Mm-hmm. That's why there's no remote work in mm-hmm. Tesla. So I did, I, I helped build thousands of Model Ys. I was there when the Giga Press, Giga Cast was introduced to the Model Y. And that was the best agile hardware I've seen. I'm, I am really proud of what Wikispeed did. Wikispeed actually had really amazing hardware iterations, but not at the volume Tesla had. Mm-hmm. You know, making thousands of cars a day uh, using real agile. Tell us more. I used to work, we used to work as, with the clients who were, you know, like in manufacturing or, or some industry or something like this. Uh, and they were saying that now it's not possible to iterate in, in this environment. It's not possible to, you know, introduce changes. I show them like a few interviews with Elon. I show them a few, a few movies, like documentaries about Tesla and SpaceX as well. So please tell us more, how did it look like from your perspective as well? Uh, I've worked in, I think, all of the large automakers worldwide now. Volkswagen, including Porsche and Lamborghini. Um, Toyota now, is my client now. Uh, Previously Nissan, Honda, Mitsubishi. Um, And there are some subsidiaries, Denso. Uh, Then Mercedes-Benz, BMW. And they all have multi-year planning, then multi-year execution, and then large testing at the end, Mm -hmm. which is what we agile people would call waterfall, you know, the cascading multi-year project. Mm -hmm. Uh, Volkswagen, for example, very normal for a hardware company, has nine-year budgets. So they've committed what they're going to do for the next nine years. And it's a problem if you go under or over those guide rails set up nine years in advance, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no allowance for learning to be incorporated faster than nine years. Mm -hmm. Tesla has a stack of AIs. I I, I don't mean to make it sound more cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is cool, but I mean, honestly, it's it's a bunch of scripts running, right? I mean, people could do this. This is not some unapproachable cyber king, queen in in space. There's a, a set of scripts making budget recommendations multiple times a second and humans reallocate funds as fast as needed, potentially multiple times a second. There's more than 150,000 employees in Tesla right now. And very often an idea is had, a design is made, it's manufactured, tested and deployed in production and approved for legal use within the same day. As SpaceX is the same, they design and build new rocket engines and fly them or at least test fire them and install them on the rocket every two days the rockets are rebuilt and remanufactured with new designs and new software the full uh upper stages of falcon for those of you who are spacex people it's the top half of these huge rockets uh there is anyone in three days it's not funny you already come on <laughs> i don't know okay, well, sure, yeah. and maybe like fans follow the podcast already yeah. but maybe what they want to do is introduce this to someone mm-hmm. to share the topic someone who's way outside the realm yeah. so truly tesla all the musk companies are doing in less than a day what most companies do in about five years mm-hmm. truly and the reason that happens is elon's operating method is pace of innovation mm-hmm. is the only thing that matters in the long run mm-hmm. Whereas every other of the companies I just mentioned, it's shareholder value. And then in some companies, it's also intentionally delaying innovation to prevent upsetting their market. Mm -hmm. So that leads to a different management style, Mm -hmm. a much slower management style. And the best selling car in the world is now a Tesla. It's the Tesla Model Y. So we see that Elon's theory is working. At least least for this part, but... 
I'm pretty sure that the best-selling uh, space traveling uh, company is also SpaceX. So, right? it, it, this is the bizarre yeah. piece of reality. Mm -hmm. Whatever this method is mm -hmm. that I'll try to be explaining after our recording here at the Agile by Example 2023 conference, I'll be saying what's Agile at SpaceX. The bizarre thing about this style of work is that it has produced the most profitable and fastest growing car company in history, aerospace company in history, SpaceX, construction company in history, oh. the Boring Company, medical devices with medical approvals mm -hmm. in history, Neuralink, mm -hmm. uh, and the fastest growing software company in history, which is now X. Apparently, you know, across multiple domains, there's something worth looking into here, uh, and it, and it's really fast. I know, I know you already did this research and analysis of, of all of these companies, and I know that you already spoke a few times about the common patterns that you notice there. So could you also share with our viewers, uh, the listeners, like what are the common success factors for, for all of these must companies, must, must empire? First, inside Tesla, I was a Tesla employee, but I visited SpaceX um, many times as a Tesla employee, because you, your badge gets you access to some, some activities. Um, there's a lot of cross-pollination. I don't know how many people know, uh, a group of SpaceX engineers created the first set of stampings, we call them, the metal shapings for the Tesla Model 3. Uh, the, the metals research goes back and forth. The steel that the Cybertruck is made out of is the same steel that Starship is made out of. So the material science research goes back and forth. There's a lot of crossover across all the companies. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's been learned to improve the stability, safety, and identification in X, formerly Twitter, is used in all the software stacks everywhere. What I learned as a Tesla employee is there's not a name for almost any of the management stuff or any of the process stuff, because that's not the point. Mm -hmm. No one there is trying to make a process or a framework or a transformation at all. I, I never found them. Instead, it's a focus on the thousand-year goal of each company. And it ends up creating this. So a lot of this is going to be names I created to give a name to this thing that had no name. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I made it. I came in and experienced it and tried to understand it. It had no name mm -hmm. uh, that I ever found. Mm -hmm. What all those companies seem to do is they have a thousand year goal, like colonize other planets, mm -hmm. spread the light of consciousness out among the stars. Mm -hmm. So each company has this goal. Uh, boring company, very straightforward. Save humanity from soul-crushing traffic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's and that probably will take a thousand years, unfortunately. So they've got these long, huge goals, and they're not OKRs. They're not smart goals. They're not any framework I have ever seen or heard. Mm -hmm. And no one was trying to do that at all. Like people were working all the time. <laughs> Uh, it was a very engineer life. So you have this goal, but then under it are it is a bottlenecking KPI. Uh, everyone can guess what should we be doing, and people vote up and vote these down through a Reddit-like app. Mm -hmm. um, and usually, Elon very clearly articulates which one is bottlenecking, and no one sees better. Elon would always say, you have no boss, your boss is data. Mm -hmm. So as a result, the companies are very nearly completely flat. There's Elon as like your administrator, kind of. Mm -hmm. And then you're sort of in an open world role-playing game, mm -hmm. kind of, where your only class, your only job is engineer mm -hmm. in this open world. Whoa. Um, and, and Elon's like the admin, so I assume if the rule system is wrong enough, Elon will reboot it. But it's kind of that. There's not really any hierarchy at all. I, I actually do think Elon's a genius, but anyone is allowed to say which KPI is bottlenecking. For SpaceX, colonize other planets, it's not let's make farming work on Mars. That's not the bottlenecking goal. Mm -hmm. The bottlenecking goal is cost per kilogram to low Earth orbit. Mm -hmm. Because if we can't afford to put stuff on Mars, it doesn't matter how good our farming on Mars equipment is. Mm -hmm. So that will come later. So right now it's all cost per kilogram to low Earth orbit. Then as someone who aspires to assist that goal, you self-organize and try to do something today to make, in my case, a Tesla 
take a second or less to manufacture today, mm -hmm. weigh a gram or less today, cost a penny or less to manufacture today, take a second or less to maintain in the future today, and you have no long-running projects. Mm -hmm. There are long-running big bets, like introduce a new car model like Cybertruck, but those are the result on focusing how are we going to achieve that thousand-year plan a second or better today. Mm -hmm. Whereas when I go in any other car company, Toyota, Mercedes-Benz, or aerospace company, NASA, uh, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, mm -hmm. Boeing, they all have a multi-year planning cycle, multi-year execution cycle, and they're making a bet that nine years from now, they, they'll have a product that's improved. The Musk mindset is today, how do you reduce time by a second? Elon is also encouraging everyone to spend money as fast as they responsibly can. And there are no budgets. There's no annual budget. I never found one. No weekly budget, no monthly budget. So what you're encouraged to spend money on is anything that will increase that KPI faster. So of course you're going to be investing in automation. You're, you're going to have a continuous integration, continuous deployment pipeline for whatever you're doing, which is mostly hardware. Mm -hmm. And that's created the best agile hardware and volume I've ever seen. And also arguably the best software yeah. too. Okay. Uh, so do you think that this, this, I don't want to call it a process or framework or whatever, whatever the Tesla, SpaceX and, and other companies, uh, mass companies are doing, do you think that this is something that someone could copy yeah. later? Okay. Yeah, I do. So how to copy that? Okay. Um, Elon is, is not writing a book and now I hope someday in the future. So someone else has got to figure out what it is. And I've tried, mm -hmm. um, and I've got an understanding of 12 practices that each seem to reinforce each other. And I'll try to summarize all 12 today mm -hmm. in the, in okay. the session after this, I added a chapter to my book, scrum master, which was already. 20 chapters, aspects of scrum mastery. And then I went to Tesla and I added chapter 21. Okay. Forget everything I read and I wrote before. This is much better. Uh, and it lists those 12 and it has some description. I actually think it's enough to, to start implementing. I did make an online course that's mm -hmm. been very popular. Mm -hmm. Um, how to find this, uh, hashtag Joe DX, Joe DX, DX for digitalization. Uh, Joe, because I, I don't think I understand all of what Elon is doing yet. I want to call it the Musk model. Mm -hmm. That sounds right. I think it'd be marketable. I don't think I got all of it. Mm -hmm. So I'm limiting it by as much of it as I got mm -hmm. it right now is Joe DX. Mm -hmm. If I ever really get it, Elon did retweet it. Yeah. I was about to mention that I, I seen it, <laughs> I seen it one day that, that he retweeted it. And, and so, so what does it mean? Like he agree with it or, uh, he didn't say, okay, but he didn't say no to anything. Okay. What he did is amplify the point that everyone's a worker. Uh -huh. There's no two class system managers and employees, uh -huh. uh, and there's no separate bathrooms or kitchens or separate parking for any group. Mm -hmm. Everyone eats in the same areas, uses the same bathroom, fights for the same parking period. And everyone's a worker. There's no positions that aren't working. That's what he said, replying to my talk, which was amplifying it. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'll take that as a strong endorsement. He didn't say, actually, Joe, you're wrong about these points. That would have been great if you did, but, uh, he amplified it. So I'll take that as an endorsement. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Awesome. So uh, anyone who wants to learn more and learn, want to copy, copy it. Hashtag Joe DX, that's the, the, the thing that you're looking for uh, if you want to be like SpaceX and, and Tesla as well. So like I, I would like from, from few interviews or few documentaries about Tesla, especially about SpaceX, I heard that there was one thing that uh, make me like very curious and I would like, love to hear more about it from you. And all it says was that uh, they are working in a way uh, that they are removing stuff from the processes, from the tools they use, from the components, like they were moving all the time and what they are aiming for to get to the point where they would have to bring some things back to the process or to, 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 the, to the tools or, or you know, uh, components that they build the rocket from, etc. 
this is something that is that is very important, crucial, or this is just a side effect of the, all of the principles that you, that you described? There's this reinforcing system. And I think without some of the other practices, just that aspect wouldn't be enough. The idea that there's no manager position to try to become, I mean, not really. There are some people called managers for legal and liability reasons, but they tend to make the same amount of money as everybody else. They tend to not have any more power than anyone else. And who's in that position? What I saw, they rotated more than once a day. There is something called a manager, but it doesn't mean what most of us think is a manager. Because of that, there's all these behaviors most of us are used to, to try to make my performance review look good, to try to make my project look good, to try to get more budget, to try to grow my ally group, to try to grow influence so I can become this like Mm -hmm. king position. Because Elon doesn't have these king positions, not that I saw anywhere, there's this whole culture of work that most of us think is necessary even, we're so used to it, that's just not present. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you can delete process because no one's going to be offended. Mm -hmm. You're not insulting anyone or reducing anyone's Mm -hmm. chances of becoming that Mm -hmm. king position. Whereas if you did that in any other company, someone would lose respect or face or why is my process removed? Why is my part removed? Or even the maintenance of that part is something that my group has approved budget to do, so don't affect mm-hmm. it, right? Well, that's all gone. So now, well, it never came. And interestingly, we got to see what happens when a traditional but highly effective modern digital company is acquired by Elon. Mm-hmm. And then Elon got the- cuts all the kings. And that's x.com, that's Twitter. Yeah. And we got to see how loud people are yeah. when you're in an entitled king position and you're suddenly asked to do engineering yeah. every day. Or go home. Yeah. yeah. Stop doing it. I mean, truly, that was it. There wasn't mass layoffs. It was, are you willing to do engineering every day? Like at a very high professional level. Like, that's it. And a lot of people said, no, no. And then like complained loudly about been, it. I haven't been playing these political games for the last 10 years to come coming back to engineering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but, I, but I'm a king in my area now and I'm aiming to be an even bigger king. So because of that, the ability to delete parts, delete processes, there's not resistance to it. In fact, maybe there's even momentum. Mm-hmm. Maybe there's cheering for it, right? So these reinforce each other. Then the modular nature of the products allow you to make significant changes without a ripple effect to a larger part of the product. Mm-hmm. So if you and I were working on the heat pump. One of mm-hmm. my favorite examples, because even the CAD files at a high level of the heat pump have been published. So mm-hmm. people can go deep on the internet. Mm-hmm. If you and I are working on this and we delete a part and we delete a corresponding process, no other part of the car has to change. Mm-hmm. And in fact, we will, it's our job then to recertify legally to the, actually there's very few federal mandates in any country about the heat pump, mm-hmm. but we need to verify that. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure the car is still legally saleable. That's our job because we're the ones who made the change. The next car will simply have that part gone and those processes not apply and it will be legally sold. So it's really low effort. We don't have to do any coordination if you and I were doing that. And I was part of many projects where that happened. SpaceX, the same. Mm -hmm. Didn't you think that, because you were talking talking about the structure of of those companies, like they are very, very flat and people are mostly... Um, responsible to each other for, for, you know, taking ownership, taking responsibility for what they are doing, as you described, and taking the ownership from the beginning to, till the end of the process, like to going to production to legalize it, and etc. Yeah. cetera. Don't you think that there is a correlation between the, this, those 1,000 years goals that you mentioned, or just the broad vision of the companies, the visions that are usually very attractive for the employees? So, like, many companies that would like to try to copy that will most probably fail because of lack of this kind of vision or lack of, you know, general purpose that they, the, that mass companies has. Don't you think that there is like a correlation between that? I completely agree with you. V- Victor, I, I think Victor actually just hit the critical point for all of us is I experienced working in a Musk company as Elon being a very talented engineer and extremely inspiring extremely motivating because of the ability to very succinctly articulate 
a clear, inspiring, meaningful, I thought, vision. And most companies and products don't have anything like that. Mm -hmm. uh, not even close. Um, if you really work hard in most companies, your boss's 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 boss gets a bigger boat. Mm -hmm. Elon doesn't even own a house. So it's easy to say, I'm not being taken advantage of mm -hmm. and believe that, which I do. I actually don't think I was being taken advantage of. Elon's sleeping in the factory. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, there are no dividends of Tesla stock. Mm -hmm. There are no oil barons manipulating the product pipeline behind the scenes, which creates a lot of negative press because those are the people who pay for a lot of press, mm -hmm. right? Um, so they're paying to, to, to slander, mm -hmm. to, to say bad things about companies that aren't obeying them, right? Mm -hmm. But because of that, it's the only company I've been in aside from my own company, aside from Wikispeed, where decisions made in favor of the goal over money won immediately. You, you need so many less meetings when you're not trying to protect different people's kingdoms and optimize budget allocations different ways, where you're simply trying to make the most efficient, most safe, most lovable and love and lovely and fast mm -hmm. car. That's a clear goal. That is actually the only goal. Well, then it's easy to know if you have an idea that will make the door weigh a gram less and it doesn't cost any more. It's actually a little safer. Do it already. You don't have to ask for an approval, mm -hmm. which is part of the self-management yeah. aspect that I experienced there. I, I believe that, you know, like uh, I just I just have this thought about the hierarchical organizations with like those few levels of management. Like one of them, of course, is uh, from one side, they are responsible for playing all of these political games. Uh, that you mentioned. Uh, also, I believe that their main job is to finding compromises between the, you know, shareholders, interests, uh, uh, employees, ideas, innovation, markets, uh, competitors, etc. So they are there as, as middlemen between people who actually do the job and people who actually give them money there, like pay the money for, for, for the job. Uh, and uh, this is what will most probably stop most of the companies to actually transform in a way that the most companies are managed right now or managed, self-managed. Yeah, this is something that that's, uh, that people uh, need to realize if they want to go that direction or at least try to improve, implement some of the must methods and, and principles. Well, you started a topic for us and for our audience about could other companies do this and then clearly stated that it'll be difficult for most companies mm -hmm. to have an inspiring goal and actually prioritize that goal, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So my current dream then is not to rescue most of the current companies. Some of them may really want to try some of these methods or even all of them, and then people like me and me will help them. Mm -hmm. But I see much more companies being founded from people who want to participate this way and don't have a company to participate this way. Mm -hmm. um, so my current dream is to take what I think I understand of the Musk model, currently limited by my understanding, so it's Joe DX, mm -hmm. and attempt to run a company to offer up to 9 billion job positions at above minimum wage. So mm -hmm. that every person on earth could work for that company if they wanted to, remote from wherever they are. Mm -hmm. uh, that is my current dream. That means it will have to have enough income to justify its growth, right? So these people have, I hope, meaningful work. Working the way we worked in Tesla and what I observed at SpaceX, but people could choose their intensity level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in Tesla, you get four days off one week and three days off the next, but you work 12 hour shifts. Not everyone has that level of energy. Mm -hmm. So I would hope it's a remote work. You determine how many, how much time you put in and are paid accordingly model uh, using those methods, but you determine your level of intensity and intentionally allowing people of any age to participate. I don't know, in some countries, maybe you're allowed to work when you're seven, but if you're not allowed to work where you are, then protect, mm -hmm. respecting the laws. But people of, of any age, uh, 80, 90, 100 years old, if they want to participate and they have 
a good hour a day of very clear thinking, welcome, welcome. There's work for you that people want. Mm -hmm. uh, something I'm experiencing right now in Japan with an aging population is a lot of people trying to find sense of purpose after a certain age mm -hmm. and trying to find value after a certain age. That's actually my social good I'd like mm -hmm. to pursue is giving meaningful, collaborative, paying work to anyone who wants it, mm -hmm. uh, provided they're willing to act ethically. Mm -hmm. I will try to challenge it a little bit, <laughs> if I may. So do you think that uh, work, job, is the only way you can assure that? No, no, no. So Elon is a is an advocate of uh, universal basic income. Yeah. If you look at Tesla bot uh, I, I, as a unit of work, mm -hmm. a human-sized, human-ish shape, roughly physically human equivalent is the goal unit of work, if you believe it could ramp in production to as much as there is work, mm -hmm. then humans have a choice. Do I work or does the Tesla bot work? And employers have a choice mm -hmm. which or which blend is, is useful for the way they want to run a business. And if you look at what uh, ChatGPT, Google Bard, Microsoft Bing, or XAI are aspiring to do and already doing, um, it's already very useful mm -hmm. in many domains and the utility seems to just be going up. Mm -hmm. So at some point at the limit, humans are not more valuable than Tesla bot Optimus and an AI stack at some point. So what do we do then? Well, then likely universal basic income. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know how soon that is. Mm -hmm. So I'll attempt to make something in the meantime. Now, even if it does come, likely people still want to feel value and contribution. Yeah. So maybe it's not anything about pay anymore, but maybe it's still about value and contribution. contribution yeah. So maybe that's still an aspiration I can participate in. I think that, you know, like the universe from Star Trek uh, movies where humanity, humankind just, you know, get rid of money and everyone has everything what, the, what they want, what they need because of the replicators and other uh, brilliant technologies. Uh, and people actually found another purpose, like they are searching purpose, like growing their, their themselves for uh, like uh, discovery, uh, communication, exploration, etc., etc. I believe that there is a huge chance that our generation will get there. I'm excited to say I think it's possible too. All right. Um, now we're here in Poland. Currently, I live in Japan, and before that, I'm from the United States. I, I grew up reading a lot of biographies. Mm -hmm. And many of the top contributors to science were what they could have been the idle rich mm -hmm. and throughout history. And, and most of those that were written about in English were in Europe. Mm -hmm. Now, there's many that were written about in Mandarin mm -hmm. and Cantonese. And my Mandarin skills super low. Uh, but in English, many of them were European. I'm a huge fan of Darwin, for example. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like Darwin was genuinely likable and lovely as far as people write. Like, love kids and mm -hmm. they played with all kinds of animals in a friendly way. These people chose to take their access to their own time mm -hmm. and use it for exploration, discovery, clarification, uh, sharing information with other people, even taking years to polish and refine an idea against possible rebuttals, possible attacks to make an extremely clear logical argument for something that would be very difficult, which is what Darwin did. Mm -hmm. So there's a chance that with this idle time, mm -hmm. we wouldn't all just be drinking beer, <laughs> which, you know, it's not, it's not so good. It's not, it's not bad. Some great ideas came after the alcohol as well. So. I love No, the, we don't recommend drinking alcohol. <laughs> I love the theory of enlightenment, that it's the switch from a, a beer-based culture to a coffee-based culture, changing from the dark ages to the era of enlightenment. I, I love this. That said, I'm sure there's a room for beer. Uh, what do you think, what will be the impact of, of AI, you already spoke about it, but the, what will be the impact of, of AI on the on the business such as SpaceX, Tesla, uh, this kind of companies, and especially the companies that are in the same industries, but not in, they are not Tesla or they are not SpaceX? Most companies don't have their own AI stack yet. Uh -huh. So either they're not using AI uh, every minute, mm -hmm. you know, it's by exception or not at all. Or if they are using AI at all, 
they're helping train chat GPT, Google Bard, Microsoft Bing, China, Baidu. Um, also Microsoft has a product that is being introduced or plans to be introduced in China. Those AIs, their training set is many companies. So even if you're training them by using them with your company's work, their ability to give recommendations to your company's work is currently averaged across all companies. I don't know how many people are here using mob, I, mob AI, doing group work with AI, but sometimes you still get really wrong recommendations. So you need a human in the loop, but you get many very good recommendations and fact checks. The companies that are using their own AI, like all the Musk companies, the recommendations that I experienced when I was working in Tesla, and this was even in 2020, and we've seen how fast AI grows, they're incredibly precise and work specific because not only do they know how much money the company has used to do what historically and who has worked on what historically and when who was working together when the KPIs like uh, weight of the center console went down the fastest, mm -hmm. right? Not only does it know all that, but it's divided by KPI. Like what type of recommendations have been useful in paint? What types of recommendation have been useful in coatings? Mm -hmm. What types of recommendations have been useful in airbag deployment? When you have in-house purpose trained AI, mm -hmm. the quality of recommendations are really good. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't get very many silly recommendations. The level of ingenuity perceived in no novelness is very high. And then they're linked to stacks of AI that help do electric motor design, magnet inference design, manufacturing process optimization. And the level of autocomplete you get is so high that you can design, build, test, deploy road legal certification in less than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Like that is an AI power. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think the Musk companies are fast mm -hmm. because people work so hard. I mean, yeah, you work hard, but so much of it's automated. Mm -hmm. And the level of robotic aid, um, virtual and physical robot aid, is higher than I've experienced anywhere. So I think companies that aren't using AI are, are behind. Mm -hmm. And companies that aren't using their own AI have missed opportunity to start training the AI. Mm -hmm. Because once you're training your own, own AI, you see which type of data and which data sets are most useful. Mm -hmm. And you start changing how you gather information and even changing how you work to make it easier to gather yeah. information. And they haven't even started that learning curve yet. Whereas a Musk company, your work is essentially to indirectly train the robots, right? <laughs> or even directly. I spent a lot of time participating in training AI. You just put it on the link there, I was training AI. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I, I've heard from many, many company founders, uh, CEOs uh, here in Poland, both abroad. Uh, that they are preparing for using AI. And by preparing, they usually mean that they are building data lakes, like collecting data, etc. But what you just said, that even might not be enough because uh, they don't know how they should prepare the data for the AI. Right. So, so they should actually start from using AI, even if they don't have a data yet, just on a small set of data and feed the data to the AI. That's the agile mindset, right? Yeah. It, it, it sounds like some CEOs with a waterfall mindset, gather the data, introduce the AI, get the result, mm -hmm. right? Whereas an agile mindset is, let's get a complete feedback loop as fast as we can mm -hmm. so that we learn what we really need to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it does look like if you're using someone else's money, a waterfall mindset is rewarded. Mm -hmm. To give money to someone, you want these promises of future returns that are specific, date-driven, they have a number mm -hmm. attached to them that they're committed to. You might have to self-fund to actually be an Agilist, mm -hmm. uh, which is what Elon yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, this actually answers a lot of questions that uh, we try to ask us many times, like for example, how to use Agile in AI. You just simply answer that in one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, uh, really, like, like I think that this is the best answer I, I ever heard. Like, they keep the feedback loop as short, as fast as possible, yeah? and uh, and go to production, test it, and then again, 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 and then figure out and improve small steps, improvement uh, to to the moment when you get where you want to be. That's the same with the with the manufacturing and anything else that that most companies are doing. 
Okay, so is, is there anything else that, that we should talk about today? Like like any other topics aside of Tesla, SpaceX and Wikispeed and your future plans of your next big company that will give, give a job for everyone else? If you're interested in helping construct the legal entities around the world that could allow nine billion people to have, I hope, meaningful, safe, aspirational, enjoyable employment, email me, um, or better yet, tweet X me, because then everybody can see and they can join in that conversation if they want. Joe Justice on X on Twitter. Um, I'd love to collaborate with you. There's Elon focuses uh, in recruitment events on what you're actually going to be doing. So he says, look, it's hardcore engineering. We don't have management positions. We don't have presentations, right? So do you like engineering? Because that's what you're going to be doing. Please show me the engineering you've done, right? So my request is in the beginning, it's going to be paperwork filing and researching different types of employment structures globally. And some countries, you still need to go into offices physically and make appointments bizarrely. You can't do it all online in some places. So if that's what you're willing and interested to do, then that's the stage this is. It's creating the structures globally so it, so a company could grow towards 9 billion people. Currently, what, 7.8, 8.2 billion? But, you know, give some headroom, right? So yes, please. I'm at Joe Justice on X. Priority will be given to verified subscribers because that's one way to reduce the amount of bots. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to read everything. Another is about AI. I don't remember who said this, but I love it. I do use AI in collaborative work every day, mob AI. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the recommendations are still really weird and not useful. So you can't just do anything that mm -hmm. is recommended. The quotation that sums up this state in AI, I love, and I don't remember who said it. Your job will not be taken by AI. Your job will be taken by a human using AI. So your job is gone, but not to AI. It's to another human who's using AI. So start using AI as well as you can, because currently AI still needs a human in the loop, or it is too erratic currently. Um, In-house AIs are pretty reliable, actually, but in general AI is Okay, that's an overloaded, overloaded term. Publicly accessible AIs like ChatGPT, Google Bing, uh, Google Bard, Microsoft Bing, need a human in the loop. So, so start using group work with AI. Then something we didn't talk about yet, but I know you know about, mm -hmm. is splitting big work into parallel executable projects. I'll, I'll call that modularity or modules. That's what makes these small teams able to get something done within a day. Like the heat pump being a separate entity mm -hmm. from the rest of the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And same in the, these massive rockets, the engines, you can have a mix of different engine types. That's unheard of in any other aerospace company, but SpaceX is intentionally engineered to allow as many parallel experiments as mm -hmm. possible. They can have their own software. Mm -hmm. They can have their own cooling systems, each engine. Mm -hmm. um, and they could all be different alloys of metal. In fact, that's encouraged because more data. Pace of innovation is the only thing that matters the moment. Mm -hmm. So how you split whatever your service or project or goal or product, your modular architecture, your agile architecture, that determines how many teams can work at the same time. That's called justice's law. The modules of the system determine the structure of your company. It's a reverse of Conway's law. Mm -hmm. Looking at a product tells you the types of communication structures used in the company that made it. There's a second part. It doesn't do you any good to have 11 teams if you only have 10 parallel executable projects. Mm -hmm. It doesn't do you any good to split an 11th parallel executable project module when you only have 10 teams. Mm -hmm. So the next is that balance. Mm -hmm. Always be trying to split more parallel ex executable projects at the rate that you can attract more execution capability and keep those as in sync as possible for optimum flow. Mm -hmm. Then we can use mob AI, mob uh, group work assisted by AI with an in-house AI, I hope, to execute each of those in parallel. And you've come very close to a must company as long as you have an inspiring goal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so what about failing, failing fast, failing safely? Yeah. What about that? How to assure that? Wow. Yeah. 
Toyota has a, a one year testing process for any new model, and it's actually limited by length of time, not by quality. Mm -hmm. It's, we need to take a year. So that means no matter what the pace of new development could even be, it's at least a year, right? Interestingly, verifying quality, testing for quality or safety has nothing to do with time. It has to do with the efficacy, the effectiveness of the test. And there are ways to test that are essentially instant. So becoming really passionately aware of your current testing capabilities and ramping mm -hmm. those as best you can fundamentally determines how quickly you can safely output mm -hmm. product. What I experienced in Tesla, I worked there in 2020. I consulted since 2010, but I didn't become a full-time employee in the company until 10 years later. Mm -hmm. By 2020, safety testing was instant and running all the time. It's not like there was a testing event once every two and a half years, like many companies, or even every three months. It never stopped. So you can introduce a new part and essentially instantly mm -hmm. have as much confidence as Toyota does a year, from, mm -hmm. year later. That allows the test and experiment. Now, at the same time, radical experiments don't have assurance of success are conducted all the time by SpaceX without customer payload and with no human mm -hmm. involved or around. Uh, Elon will very often say, this is a launch with customer payload. This is a launch with humans. It is as safe as things in the world can be. Mm -hmm. This launch has no customer payload, has no humans. It has approximately a 50% chance of exploding. We're trying a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. So those are done all the time that constant investment, which also is exciting. It makes for some great YouTube footage. Yeah, so, so it's also about uh, making a testing process as any other process. So you are simplifying it, speeding it up, like removing things that are not needed. And actually this is the way how to assure the safety. What I think I experienced is that the, the tools for test and the tools to design were the same mm -hmm. tools. They, it, they weren't different. I also remember like uh, it was more than 10 years ago, I spoke to Bob Martin uh robert martin and he said like i remember that someone on your room said that oh there is a testing code and the production code i said no testing code is a part of the production code yeah, and the same the same here software companies not all of them are are so quick but many really get it the idea of devops and ci cd is the state of the art someone asked on x two weeks ago my company has great ci cd we can test and release multiple times a day, what should we do next? And the best answer I had was, well, then focus on doing work worth doing. Mm -hmm. You have great process. That's what companies want. So now it's not about process optimization. Are you building something that is useful to the world? They said, oh, I'm in game development, but entertainment is kind of valuable, right? And yes, it is. Especially in the topic that we spoke before, yeah, that, that people will, you know, maybe in the near future, they won't need to work anymore. So leisure, entertainment will be one of the things that, that will provide some purpose for people. Maybe. Or might be. Okay, so uh, let's try to wrap up all the things that we spoke about. And if you could give one advice to the leaders of the organizations, like founders, C-level, etc., something that will um change their way they they are thinking right now maybe not doing anything yet but thinking the way that will improve the let's say improve the world let let think big wow okay if if this person this group of people can choose the goal of the company that actually prioritizes where the money's spent making that a worthwhile inspiring goal would be the thing i mean mm -hmm. that's it let's colonize another planet uh, let's have a higher bandwidth communication pathway to AI, which is what Neuralink is about. Um, let's solve quadriplegic problems, which is the near-term goal of Neuralink. Do that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, not everybody that's listening can set the mission and goal and then align funding to it. Mm -hmm. So then also hugely impactful and maybe a wider group of people could do it. Mm -hmm. Attempt to have a shorter budgeting cycle. Mm -hmm. If you have a nine-year budgeting cycle like the Volkswagen Group has and you learn something new, all the engineers get depressed because they can't implement any of it on company time and definitely not sell any of it mm -hmm. for 
nine years on average. Mm -hmm. Try to make it eight years. If you're at one year, one year budgeting cycle, can you do quarterly? Mm -hmm. I mean, the shorter the checking, should we change budget without penalty, mm -hmm. right? Without a, an elaborate change request process and penalty, the more agile, the financially backed change of the company is. Mm -hmm. And fundamentally, the more exciting the workplace is for people who like to innovate. And if pace of innovation is the only thing that matters, then the budget length becomes enormously important as a bottlenecking factor. So even if you can't choose the company mission and you're just making something uninspiring, at least try to make innovation possible by mm -hmm. shortening the budget cycle. And then anybody, please start asking any question that you would ask your manager or if you're managing, most companies are hierarchical, right? So they have something like that. Or any questions someone asks you as their manager, start also trying to ask that to some AI because the answer is probably as good or maybe better mm -hmm. than the one you would have gotten or the one you would have given and cut yourself out of that management conversation so you can focus on engineering. And you can do that even if you're in a waterfall company. Mm -hmm. you pure play waterfall. You can at least start redirecting any approval request or managing question to basically automate it to AI. We can all do mob AI. We can all do group work that's AI assisted, even if we're not using any agile. Mm -hmm. And then the agile frameworks, man, they've been replaced. Um, you don't need any sprint planning. You definitely don't need big room planning. You don't need a PSI. If you're doing AI assisted group work, that all becomes overhead, 100% overhead. Mm -hmm. You don't need a scrum master. You don't need a product owner that gets fully replaced by mob AI. And what's more important that already happened is on the prediction is on the future. It's been those sort of things that already happened. Okay. So, whoa, that was. That was a great discussion. Thank you very much, Cho. Uh, it was great pleasure to talk to you here. Uh, I hope, I'm, I'm sure that people will enjoy it uh, as soon as we will uh, release it. So thank you very much again and hope to have a chance to speak to you again someday. My pleasure. Next time, let's, uh, let, let's do many next times. Mm -hmm. And maybe when I haven't just changed time zones halfway, um, hopefully I can be a, an even better participant with, uh, with a stable sleep schedule. Come on, come on, you were great, you were awesome. <laughs> we, we, we are awesome. You are awesome, we are awesome, we, we are awesome. awesome. Yeah, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to follow Joe Justice uh, in social media on X and many other places that, that you're publishing. If you're in Poland, uh, I'm lucky enough to be here in person because of a Krakow-based company, Procognita. And if you're in Poland, many of you probably know Procognita, they are, a, a absolutely nationwide and actually internationally well-known agile provider, training, coaching provider. And I've had the chance to work with the Procognita team many times. Uh, and I highly recommend them. If you're in Poland, that's an easy way to find whatever I'm lucky enough to get to do in Poland. And by the way, uh, Tomek Wykowski, who is founder of Procognita, was a guest for one of the previous episodes where we talk about scaling companies, uh, introducing agile to bigger companies. Also, I feel invited to watch this video as well. Thank you very much. Pragmatic Talks is delivered to you by Pragmatic Colors, the first choice software development partners for startup founders. Be sure to catch all new episodes, subscribe to our YouTube, Spotify or Apple podcast channels. And if you are thinking about building your own startup or struggling with product development, contact us and find out what we can do together.